So let's take a look. Do we have a winch? Yes! We have a winch. Nice. Back in the cockpit, working on the winches. Um, I'm able to do this today because honestly we finally got a break in the weather it's been triple digits every day for the past like four days and then over 95 degrees for the past like seven days so I just have been either working or you know doing my day job or trying to stay cool um, but today it's like 89 so what is that like maybe 32 degrees so manageable compared to the recent weather so here I am out here today we are going to first so um, first we need to dish out all of these holes um, a little bit more I did a um, a countersink drill bit to chamfer the edge a little bit but it really wasn't didn't really work as well like that one looks pretty good you can see how it's the edge there is dished out but like this one over here it just didn't work out very well because the countersink bit I had was too small so it kind of just went in the hole <laughs> so what instead we're going to use is this guy. Um, I think you've seen me use him before, but it's a Milwaukee 12 volt cutoff wheel, cutoff tool. Usually there's a little blade on here, like a kind of like a circular saw. But there was a kit on eBay that allowed you to convert it to this um, this kind of like detailed belt sander with a uh, Harbor Freight um, belt sander tensioner here. So this is Harbor Freight, this is eBay, and then the Harbor Freight thing kind of just clamps onto the eBay thing. And then, yeah, you can really use it to, to get into some of these tighter places. So that'll be a, a good, nice um, way to dish out those holes. And um, then, fingers crossed, we can fill them with epoxy today. <laughs> that would be amazing if I get all that done. So let's start with the, the grinding and the sanding. As Mads would say, glorious, glorious sanding. There we go. <clears throat> so look at how many belts I used. One, two, three, plus this one. So what I did was uh, you just take your little belt and just go around each of the edges. Each of the edges. And you dish it out. <clears throat> so now the epoxy has a nice larger surface area of bare fiberglass. That's the laminate right here. Uh, let me show you guys. So, this part is the laminate. So there's core material, which we talked about, and then layers of fiberglass and probably polyester resin or vinyl ester resin, I'm, I'm guessing. Probably not epoxy because it's expensive and this is a production boat um, so yeah this is the uh, this dark part here is the layers of fiberglass and resin and then this is the gel coat so um, good good surface area here for the new resin to adhere to 
Um, and our holes don't have to be perfect for one because I'm going to come back and fill them and fair them and paint them. And then two, most of these holes are going to be under the winch. So uh, nobody's ever going to see it until you take the winch off. But uh, yeah, this is a good start. And um, we'll do the other side. All right, this side is done too. But check this out. <laughs> There's the aftermath. Six blades, or six uh, file belts, they're called. <clears throat> and they're not even in bad shape. They're just, look at, that one's barely even used. But it just snapped right there at where it joins, where the two pieces join together. So that one did that. <laughs> That one did that, that one did that, that one did that, and that one did that. <laughs> so these, that's what I was using. So either those are really, really crappy or I'm doing them wrong. But I bought these belts off of uh, like, like the most deepest clearance from West Marine. They have like a 70% off section. These were on there for a few bucks, so I bought them, and either that's why they were so cheap, or maybe I'm using them wrong. I have too much tension on my on my arm. I don't know, um, but anyways, it took six belts to get <laughs> just a little bit of fiberglass grinding done. Thanks for the cut. I mean, that's not great, but they were they were super cheap. So now I've got them all vacuumed out. I'm going to go back over with some acetone and start laying in some epoxy and some fiberglass. This is the fun part. <laughs> Check it out, the other one has little patches. I got some air bubbles in there, but... It's fine, just little, little tiny guys. So, um, a guy, uh, Paul, down the dock came by and he gave me a cool trick. So, wax paper on the epoxy. So it flattens it out and um, yeah, keeps, uh, keep, it helps smooth things out. So uh, let's do that on this one over here too. All right, so check it out. We'll just do this with our fin roller here. <clears throat> so the benefit is like the fin roller stays clean too because the uh, epoxy is not coming in through the wax paper. And then just work out the little air bubbles a little bit and then like for these see those big air bubbles you can kind of do that and work the air bubbles out that way yeah just like that good stuff and this one too So this hole here, we had a, a bit of an emergency. <laughs> I kept filling it and filling it and filling it, and it just was so thirsty, so thirsty. I kept filling it and filling it and filling it with all this epoxy. And I was like, man, what is going on? And Paul, the neighbor guy, they gave me the wax paper idea. He's like, are you sure you taped that one up good enough down below? And so, we asked Devin to go take a look, and sure enough, this one, <laughs> there was an extra hidden hole right next to it. So you couldn't see the hole from up here. Um, but because I drilled it out, um, apparently the two holes connected together, this big one and then the, the one I couldn't see, and uh, it leaked all over the quarter cabin. Luckily, we kept the, um, the 
bedding down there <clears throat> kind of stored away in uh, plastic bags. So most of it landed on the plastic bag, but some of it did get on the, the mattress. life that we've all been dreaming of. Alright, that looks pretty good. So, one little crisis, not too bad. Um, overall, pretty happy with, with the way this is turning out. We'll see how this wax paper idea turns out tomorrow. Um, but yeah, we made the boat a little bit worse today, but overall we made it more better, much better. So the boat turned out to be a little bit better today. <laughs> Even though we had a disaster with the epoxy, we did fix multiple holes. So does that offset itself? I think it's a little bit better. All right, next day. Let's take a look at how our wax paper idea. So what we should do, we should just be able to peel this off without too much effort. Yeah, not a problem. So it's not great. We do have uh, some high spots here. So that's why we've got our sanding machine out. <laughs> sanding machine, a, pal a palm sander. <laughs> so we'll just go ahead and uh, sand down those high spots so they're nice and smooth. And then um, we will drill fill drill so after we fill filled the old holes um we've got to actually drill the holes that'll fit the new winches and we do that with a drill fill drill method and basically um we can use one of these holes as an example so the idea of drill fill drill is um if your hardware is smaller than this epoxy hole then um, when you drill the through hole for your hardware if water does get in there it will just touch the epoxy and not the core material so the idea is to drill a bigger hole than you need for your hardware fill that and then drill your hardware hole. And then look at these things. Look at those. These are like egg sacs down there. There's two right there. One, two, three, four over there. Weird. That's cool. Huh, I wonder what that is. All right. Well, nature aside, let's start doing our job for tonight. Look at that boat bling. Looks really good. So I got the winch base here, and these are the mounting holes for the type of mount that we are going to use. And... I set it up on the cockpit combing here and um, marked where I want the, the holes to be. I positioned the winch with the drum on it and then took the drum off and then marked my holes uh, just with a pencil. <clears throat> so now the idea is drill fill drill like we talked about. So this bigger drill bit, I'm going to drill a, a hole and then fill it with fresh epoxy and then drill a smaller hole for the actual hardware to go through and so the idea being that the hardware won't ever touch the core material it'll touch 
uh, just good solid epoxy. So if there is a leak through our piece of hardware, um, it'll leak out, touch the epoxy, and then just drip straight down. It won't go sideways into the into the wooden uh, the, or the balsa core material. So just as we thought we were done filling our holes, <laughs> we gotta drill some more and fill those again. But we want this done right, and um, that's the way it's gotta be. Let's get started on that. All right, here's a great representation of the drill fill drill method. Um, so if you notice, right here on this side, that's all epoxy. And then look at this side. That is all the balsa core material. And so the reason why we do the drill fill drill method is because once the fitting is in there, our, our screw, our bolt, here, let's get one out and I'll show you. Once that's in there, if any moisture or water should leak around the bolt, and it will, it's, it's a boat, and then things flex and move and expand and contract with heat and cold, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the water won't penetrate the epoxy at all, but it will penetrate the wood. So if you see how this is all drilled out, you have a nice wall of epoxy there all the way up and down the hole. And that's what we want to see all the way around the hole. So the next step of, to do this is to um, fill it up with epoxy and then drill it out again with the the size of the bolt that we or the bolt hole that we need so I thought that was pretty cool to show you guys the uh, how the epoxy acts as like a, a barrier um, that was a good this is a good representation to show you how how that would work so it's the next day and the holes for the drill fill drill have dried epoxy which is good I'm actually really surprised that I filled these really really tall I mean I filled them up to the to the edge and uh, the epoxy just settled in there really good and this time there were no drips down below so that must have really just been some thirsty wood um, so yeah, that's set up really nice, and now my job tonight is to um, lay down primer <clears throat> and lay down some paint if the primer allows for that. It's pretty warm, so I think it'll dry pretty quick. Um, but yeah, let's we'll see how much we get done there. Uh, but Devin had an awesome idea, so. Clearly I don't want to paint over my drill fill drill holes because I won't know where to where to drill. <laughs> so she says just paint like just feather it out where the uh, winch won't be because the winch pad will sit here and this will all be covered up but like this one will be exposed, that'll be exposed, this will be exposed, that edge will be exposed. So she says just take a paintbrush and paint out here and don't worry about painting in here brilliant nobody's gonna ever see that um, so yeah we've got that one to do that one to do and then last night I just did a little bit of a epoxy patch job right there and here so oh and then over there too so I'm gonna get some get those cleaned up and put some uh, epoxy or not epoxy primer down on those and get it ready for paint so let's get that started getting close okay quick update got the uh, primer on in the various spots uh, yeah 
you know, it's a uh, pitching wedge, right? It's a pitching wedge job. It looks good from from 50 yards. <clears throat> but I read a quote a while ago. Um, a gentleman said he views his boats as tools. It's a tool. Uh, it serves a purpose. It um, gives us shelter, gives us safety, gives us transportation, gives us recreation, leisure. So it doesn't have to be perfect. And with just what I've done so far, and I'm not done tonight, I can already say the boat is a little bit better today. So next step is I'm going to cut the, or mark out the material for the backing plates. So let's go ahead and get that started. Well, that was way easier than I was thinking it to be. <laughs> Literally just tracing lines from the base of the winch onto our backing plate here with a pencil. Um, so, yeah, amazing. And um, I wanna show you guys something. I have a, another dirty little secret to share with you. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love <coughs> new hardware. Look at this stuff. Look at that. Oh, so pretty. So shiny. Oh, it looks so good. Got all of the hardware that we need <clears throat> for this job in this bag. Oh, the fish just jumped right there. <laughs> Look at these. Beautiful. This is all 316 stainless. And then I got these special washers. Um, all of this is from McMaster Car. It's like amazing. Um, but these special washers, they, uh, they're bigger and thicker than normal washers because they're designed to s distribute the load further out. So um, I thought that would be a good uh, piece of hardware for this application. But yeah, uh, McMaster Car is amazing. They're a little expensive, but they the shipping's fast. They have like hundreds of thousands of fittings, but their app, the way they organize it is brilliant. It's simple to use. Sorry for this helicopter. Simple to use app. What is that thing? Oh, there it is. Anyways, McMaster Car, check them out. Download the app and there's a discount code below. No, there's not, I'm just kidding. Uh, I just like using them and they have good stuff and the shipping's good. It is a little expensive, but you can get all the things you want out of, for 316 stainless, uh, which is the stainless you want in a marine environment because it's uh, very corrosion resistant. Yeah, so this is coming along really, really nice. I am happy. It's a little bit late to get out the skill saw and cut that. Um, so I'm not sure I want to make that much noise at this time of day. We'll see. Um, I'll check the time and, and decide. But maybe instead we'll just put on the, the coat of paint because the, the um, primer is drying really fast in this heat. <sighs> yeah, good stuff. 
good progress. Okay. So, it is a little bit late and I am kind of worried about making noise. So, I'm going to continue the work here in the boat shed or the boat house. It's, uh, so, it's floating. <laughs> really, I mean, we, I think we've showed you this before. It's really, really cool. And then these doors open up and there's like a little um, walk out over there to yeah, get in the water with paddle boards or whatnot. Um, but yeah, so I'm in here set you guys up there and so the first thing I'm gonna do while I have this big piece of material to hold on to <clears throat> is just drill my holes um, the garbage can is to catch the the drill plastic dust that'll still fall but um, I'm gonna drill my holes with uh, without the circles cut out because you just have more things to hold on to while you're drilling. So let's just get this going. Check it out. Got a new tool for this job. <laughs> it's really nice. So this is just a can bear tool and it's got some good weight to it. Nice place up here to hold your hand. Um, kind of, kind of quiet. Like not, not super loud. Um, <clears throat> a nice light on it to see where you're going, and then a quick connect or a quick, quick change for your blade. Just put that in. Blades locked in. So yeah, first time I'm I'm using it. <laughs> so you guys are gonna go for a ride with me. Let's see let's see how it works. to go uh, check in with Devin and step inside the wood shop here workshop boathouse check them out <laughs> not perfect circles but <laughs> good enough nobody's ever gonna see them <laughs> they will be mounted up under and below uh, they will be out of sight. Um, but what I am gonna do is uh, take my little sander guy here and just round over the edges and knock off some of these burrs. And yeah, then our backing plates will be done. Yeah. 